Hey guys, the comp shoot. So, so far I've done uh, two series where I sort of try to analyze um, every single option I have that turn and sort of rope every turn and do a long strategic analysis on my games. Um, the past two have been Control Warrior. I thought I'd do one today with Arena Lock because that's a really popular thing. People like it a lot. And Arena Lock is, you know, one of the best control decks right now, I'd say. Um, it is tier two, but it's definitely the top of tier two, if not tier one. And, um, you know, it's it's just a really good solid control deck, and you have a lot of options between tapping, you have a lot of cards in your hand, so it's a good thing to do this sort of analysis with. Um, this isn't a deck tech, so I'm not going to talk more about my personal tech choices. Uh, if you're looking for a good renal lock list, definitely check out the Tempo Storm Meta Snapshot. It has it on there with the Mulligan Guide and all that. Um, but for now, we are just going to, uh, you know, play some, uh, play some renal lock, and we're going to analyze everything that we can possibly do. Let's go ahead and queue up, play some Legend Rank renal lock, commentate on everything so on and so forth. Let's see what we're up against here. There we go. Alright, looks like we're playing against a mage. Might be some sort of tempo mage, could be freeze mage, could even be fatigue mage. We'll, uh, we'll see in a second here. So as far as mulligans here go, um, Yang Boss is fine if it's like, um, you know, Tempo Mage, uh, it's a little bit less good if it's Freeze Mage, but still probably fine, you know, it's a 3 drop, we, we can tap the second turn and then cast it. I'm not a huge fan of keeping Argus, just because we want to do it on when we have a board, we're not going to have a board by turn 4 usually, and then Siphon's too expensive as well. So we're going to keep the Yang Boss mulligan more for, um, you know, the Twilight Drake's a really good one because we can tap, tap, Twilight Drake, or like tap, Gang Boss, Twilight Drake. Mulligan is a little bit more awkward, but if we draw a Void Collar, it's fine. Uh, Morag again, a little bit on the uh, the high side of what mana costs and what we want to be casting. Um, you know, both if it's Tempo or Freeze Mage, you definitely want to uh, find Arena here. There's a Siphon again. Siphon's actually fine because we can use it to kill Doomsayers. Rag is also really good against Freeze Mage. Looks like it might be Tempo though. Or this could be, just be a scientist. It's hard to tell with mage sometimes. Uh, he's coining something. Coining Acolyte. So I think it's probably Freeze Mage. Uh, I'm a little bit confused though. We could play the Gang Boss, but there's really no reason to let him draw two... <coughs> excuse me. Two cards of the Acolyte when we have a Twilight Drake. And if he pings it next turn anyway, that's fine. We just kill it. It's basically the same result. You know, because if we play the Gang Boss, he won't ping it. He'll just hit and then play something else. And then we'll have to hit it again. So he'll get two cards. Whereas this way, if he wants to get two cards out of it, he has to sacrifice his next turn play, like a secret or something. And Twilight Drake, you know, is pretty hard for Freeze Mage to deal with. They have to either spend, like, a Frost Nova and a Doomsayer, or he's going to have to, uh, you know, like, fireball it, plus do some extra damage to it, which is never fun for them. So here we have a couple options. Uh, tr casting Twilight Break is, is Twilight Drake, excuse me, is probably the best one. Definitely the one we're gonna go for. But um, you know we could look at just playing the game boss. But again, we've discussed we don't want to let him draw two cards without having to ping his own uh, creature. We could play Ooze and tap, but then the Ooze probably gets frost bolted or something, or he can hit ping and just clear the Ooze. Um, we could just tap and look for like I don't know some crazy two drop like Dark Bomb. Uh, but playing Drake just seems the most efficient, best option. So we're gonna go for that. You know, it's a 4-9, it's going to be hard for him to deal with. He probably doesn't play Owls in his Freeze Mage deck. And it is almost definitely Freeze Mage since he's casting Arcane Intellects and has an Acolyte out. Yeah, so now he has to ping his own Acolyte. He's going to run it into the Drake as well, probably. I'll show them. There's a Scientist. Oh, no, he's just hitting face. Okay, so here we have a few options as well. Um... We could, now the gang boss is a lot safer play because it doesn't let him draw multiple cards. Um, we also decide where to attack with the drake. Uh, that depends on if we want a demon wrath here to clear both these creatures and then go face the drake. It does deal two damage to our drake, which means it can be fireball pinged or frostbolt ice lanced. Um, if we're going to do that, we'd probably tap first. We could just play the belcher and hit face. That lets him ping the acolyte again though, and I don't want him getting um, three cards of the acolyte. We could clear this with a Twilight Drake or play Belcher. So the two lines I'm looking at most are uh, Demon Wrath tap of hit face or hit this play of Belcher. Um, I think I like the Belcher line better because I don't want to damage my own Drake for no reason and also um, 
you know, clearing these creatures isn't a huge priority, and Demon Wrath might be better later. It does give us an extra tap, uh, but we can always tap later. So I'm gonna go for the, uh, the Bell Shalom. Because I think this is the line that lets, um, that makes it the hardest to clear Twilight Drake. You know, Belch is good on the board. Like, we could have played Gang, Gang Boss and Tap, but that lets him trade here and then Fireball this. I don't like that. Um, now I guess he can Fireball the Belcher and then trade the Scientist to him, but then we could Coil it. Um, on turn 8, we definitely want to be slamming Rag, so we want to keep that in mind as we play, because Rag is really hard for a uh, to deal with. Oh, that's a Coil target if we want to Coil. Which I think we do, actually. So here, we're gonna probably clear the scientist with the belcher or something and then hit face the drake because we want to conserve health on the drake but to start off with i'm gonna coil this because that gives us access to all our options and then i'll probably gang boss and tap so that the void color can pull so the malganus because that's really powerful but for now i'm gonna start by uh coiling Ooh, peddler so i think we definitely want to clear the scientist here Oh, wow, that's actually really lucky that he doesn't that he has both this both of a secret in hand. Oh, so he has he has both his ice blocks in his hand, which is uh, which is really good for us. But that's also somewhat annoying uh, later. But we'll, we'll worry about that later. So here we can do a couple things. Oh, we're running out of time. I don't want to tap here because I don't want to make our life total too low, so he doesn't have to Alexstrasza. So I'm just gonna gang boss. And I'm gonna play a two drop. Oh, I have to decide between Ooze and Peddler. I'm gonna go with Peddler because I think the uh, card is worth the one extra damage we're gonna take. Uh, I'm gonna take Elven Archer because once he pops Ice Block, it's a way to deal direct damage to his face. Ooh, that's scary. The rope is pretty scary. It's a lot harder than I thought. But yeah, I value knowing what this card is more than I value um, that one extra point of damage because he was gonna cast like that anyway. Alright, we get an extra attack over here. Actually, we don't because he is frozen, but that's fine. Oh, we have a heal bot here, which is nice. Uh, I think I'm probably going to tap down to 22 just because that's a safe amount. And probably just play the Void Caller and nothing else. Again, we want to hold this to once we pop his Ice Block at him being at 1. Uh, we have no reason to heal bot yet. I mean, we could heal bot now, but it's better to wait until after he Alexes us. Because he can't he can't just deal 22 damage next turn, right? So we still have time, some time to heal bot. And I'd rather put this out because if he Flame Strikes you, for example, we can pull uh, Melganus. And then he has to waste another 7 damage uh, clearing that before he can go to our face. Um, the main card we want to find right now is Reno, but um, I think this hand is pretty well set up to beat our opponent anyway. Okay, so our opponent is actually just uh, probably either a barrier or a block. Um, so, uh, I guess we can find out which secret it is first. Not that that will affect our decision making process too much, but okay, it's a block. That makes sense. So here we have a couple options. Um, we could have uh, siphoned our own Void Color earlier to deal more damage with the uh, the minions, but I don't want to do that because um, you know it's a, this is protection from Flame Strike. What I do want to do, so he can't, he likely can't deal 16 damage to us if he has like Frostbolt, Lance, Lance plus Fireball. Oh, then he could actually kill us. So that's mildly annoying. In that case, I'm probably just gonna heal bot, uh, just because he does have the chance of killing us. I'm gonna leave a slot open for a minion because I could cast like Rag or Malgan or something if he Frost Novas. I don't want him just locking us out by Frost Nova. That's like a really big mistake. He can do that anyway by pinging in Frost Nova, uh, but maybe he won't see that line. Or maybe he'll have to use all his mana, so we are not gonna play another minion onto the board. He did just Fireball or Face though. Um, if he doesn't have Antoninus, he might be running out of burn. Uh, if he Alexes us, then we can just like siphon the Alex, or maybe just play Mal run this in to get Malganus. Uh, we'll see what happens. But I think we needed to heal butt there. And then again, I don't really want to play a minion. He's just pinging our face. Is he gonna pass now? Cause that'd be crazy. He is just gonna pass. All right. Does hmm. does attacking with this and siphoning it let us pop the block? So that's. Three. We also could just hard cast the Malganus, but I guess we could just do that. Does that let us pop the block? I wonder. Let's see, uh, three. 
6, 8, 9, 13, 16, and we get 6 extra damage. So that actually does let us pop the block. So I am just going to cast the Melganus here. I could have gone for Rag, but this gives us additional protection, which I like more. Let's do just like the best way possible. So we want to go four, four, eight. We had no other option than to pop it at two, which is a little bit annoying because the the elven archer can't can't get there now. But that's okay. So he has another ice block. He can't burn us though because he has to burn the Malganus. And at that point, we can even safety siphon one of our minions. Or we can just do that, um, you know, for complete rebels. So I guess let's pop this first. Could have actually done with the archer, it doesn't really matter. Um, so let's. I mean, he can clear this anyway. We don't want him. The, the card is better than him just having the spell power. Like, he gets to make whichever decision is better for him, whether it's the card or the spell power, so we'd rather make that decision for him um, than give him the option. And then I guess let's just Reno, because that is the safest option. And there's no reason to tap, really, because we just have him dead. Even if he if he Alex's, we still have lethal on board. Um, if he, like... He hasn't played Thor since, so he can't do anything really crazy. I mean, he could freeze. But, one, there's this problem, so he has to have a Frostbolt for it. And two, we took the Elven Archer, because we're, we're great at the game. And I could just play Rag here, and I win either way. I could also siphon this. Like, there's there's lots of great ways to win, but this is probably the best one. And that actually ended up being a pretty short one, so let's go ahead and do uh, one, one more game of uh, gameplay analysis. You know, Freeze Mage is probably a pretty good matchup if we draw the right cards. But definitely um, looking at which option to take probably helped us a lot. Alright, let's see what we're up against now. Gul'dan versus Jaina! You asked for it. Well, here's uh, here's round two. So this is actually nice because we get a look at um, this matchup again from like maybe a different perspective, different hand. Uh, we know it's Freeze Mage for sure now. He's gonna be mulliganing because he also knows what we have. Um, it's actually really cute, cool that we queued up against him again because now we get to uh, you know do a more in-depth analysis of this game. Still, usually I've really only done uh, one game for this series, but um, you know since the last one was short, it's sort of like a continu continuation of the previous game. Excuse me. We're gonna keep the heal bot because we want all our healing. Then we're gonna look for like Reno and Malganus and all that stuff. Uh, the giant is good because I don't really have a good way to deal with it. Siphon's also fine. Coin Mountain Giant is really awkward though because we have to tap on turn two and then we can't tap on turn three because our hand will be too full if we want to play the giant on turn four. But life is hard sometimes. He's obviously not gonna do anything on turn one unless he got us with the uh, with a Tempo Mage deck swap, but hopefully not. All right, cool. Pass the turn. You know, Freeze Mage is a deck that does get played a lot ladder on ladder, so it's like helpful to know how to play this. Okay, so when you're playing Freeze Mage and you just play uh, a Thalnos like this on turn two, it's because you want to cycle it. Um, there's no reason for us to like coin Gang Boss to contest or anything, because he wants to cycle it. He's not just going to start frost bolting our face and getting spell damage. So let's tap. Probably not gonna do anything next turn. Like we could cast the gang boss, but again, I want to play this on turn four, not like later. Yep, solid. The There's an acolyte. To me. So yeah, his hand is just very uh, draw heavy. And we could play MC Tech to contest the acolyte. We do get delayed on the giant then. It's a little bit awkward. Uh, opponent probably forgot to push on turn or something. Cool. Okay, there's Reno. So now we really don't have that much to worry about with Healbot and Reno in hand. 
We still have to play carefully. I've still lost games where I've renoed against Freeze Mage. Um, really, it's about whether he can go off with Antonitis or not, or if we reno at the right time. So again, I could play like MC Tech to contest here, but then I don't have a good four drop. So many possibilities. I guess if I just play uh, MC Tech, this will go to costing five, and then next turn it'll cost four. So we're actually fine just playing this. Engaging TC All right. This locator. Uh, by playing a three drop, that means we can't uh, we can't coin tap Mountain Giant next turn, but that's fine. We can still just play the Mountain Giant. He's paying the Acolyte to draw a card. It's fine. Uh, I think I'm going for this rather than Gang Boss to make him have to ping for the draw. All right, so that's a Frostbolt down. It's important to mentally keep track of what burn uh, Freeze Mage is when they're playing it. So here, you know, we could tab, we could play Ooze, we could play Gang Boss, but this is just going to be harder for him to deal with in a better play. Like, you can Fireball it and then run one of these in and draw a card, and then he's using a Fireball too, and he's just running low on burn. And he'll have to go off with Antonitis to win, and then we have Siphon for it. And he probably doesn't play, like, Clockwork Gnomes to get um, Stealth Spare parts, so we can just Siphon at the turn he plays it. He needs a really good Thoris in turn and a really good Antonitis turn to beat us with this kind of hand, uh, and this kind of board. He's pinging again. He might freeze this. That's usually a losing strategy, but like he could. Oh, secret. All right. So he's kind of bringing the beats on us. Um, hmm. So we do have Siphon in hand for if he Doomsayers. Um, I could clear one of these, but I'm not super worried about that. And he can't burn us out next turn with any combination of cards. If he like goes to Frostbolt, Ice Lance, Ice Lance, Ping Face, then I can just Reno. So I think I'm just gonna put a bunch of minions on the board that can trade with these and then go face with the giant. So I can put like Gang Boss and Ooze on the board to trade with both of those, and then I can hit face uh, and heal Ice Spirit and absorb the damage, and then we're all good to go. You can like Blizzard this turn. But that's fine, we'll probably just respond with Healbot. I and mean, we could have just played this and then tapped, but I don't like tapping down 21 too much, especially since we already have really all the tools we need to win the game. Yeah, it makes sense to run this into a creature. He doesn't care too much about the damage, and he just wants the card draw. Might see a blizzard here, although if he, if he was blizzarding, he would have probably run it in here to clear the imp and the gang boss. The end is coming! Doomsayer. Okay, so, I mean, I could just let it trigger. I could tap to look for an owl, but I could, like, play Reno or heal bot to heal. But pretty obviously the play here is to siphon the Doomsayer because it saves all our minions, lets us heal, uh, just as everything we really want to do. Actually, if we draw an Owl, it's better to silence this and hit the Doomsayer. I guess it doesn't really- yeah, it, it, it's, it's better just in case he plays Duplicate or Echo or something. Um, it's actually sometimes worse because then if he has four- it's more likely for him to have four minions for my control tech if we, uh, if we leave him with a blank Doomsayer. But in general, it's usually better to silence this and clear it. Okay, so we're- I mean, we probably just want to play Dr. Boom because it's the hardest thing to clear in our hand. Um, question is, how do we want to clear here? We probably want the 8 damage to go to phase because we want to start getting him low. And we also probably want to uh, clear this because we don't want him having more spell power. Uh, so we're going to clear it with the Imp because the Imp just gets pinged off and stuff like that. Um, we could also, you know, like BGH because BGH is only going to hit only gonna hit Alex BGH, sorry. And we can Argus to prevent this from dying like a Frostbolt or something, but I think uh, the best option here is the Dr. Boom. Because we want the bombs to die and then hit face if you like Frost on those Doomsayers. Um, and yeah, it's just a very strong option. The second Frost Nova Doomsayer is actually pretty bad for us here. We'd probably tap to find an Owl if we don't find it. Um, we would probably just pass or maybe heal bot or something. It looks like he doesn't have it. There's a secret. Ooh, Lord Jiraxis. That's actually a pretty good one. So here I do like tapping first, because from 9 mana he can't deal 22 damage because Frostbolt, Ice Lance, Ice Lance, Fireball is, um... 
is only 17 damage. So, so um, I think we want to tap just to look at our options. And then I think we want to Argus here because it stops us from dying to Frostbolt. And also buffs this bomb up so we can trade both the bombs into the heal bot. We're actually going to do it first like this to see if the bomb that can get pinged off will just kill the heal bot. But it didn't, so now we're going to go ahead and trade this in as well. Now yeah, we're going to hit him for uh, a decent amount of damage. Um, we can also play this as just... Uh, so 2-3, we want to save the BGH for Alex. You can also play this. Um, it does just die to Flame Strike. Mm. He did already Flame Strike, though, and they usually only play one, so I'll go ahead and play this out here. Might as well just give everything Taunt. Not that it really matters. He's not playing Black Knight, and he's not usually attacking face. I guess having Taunt on average is slightly better than not having Taunt. Um, but we will play it just to increase the clock. I bring life. There's Alex. It's probably Ice Block, so let's... Um, we actually can't pop it to one again, so let's pop it to uh, let's pop it to two. We could heal bot here, but it's just a twenty-three. I mean, there's no reason not to just Reno, right? Because we we never want to be below fifteen anyway. Um, I'm just gonna. Could just BGH this. I could also just trade. I guess this is the only use we'll ever get for BGH, so I might as well keep this on the board. I got the beast in my side. Now we have to decide if we want to heal bot or Reno. We never really want to fall below 15, right? So Reno and healing us for 15 is going to be a lot of value. Out of time. Versus like, because if I fall below 15, I'm just going to drag this, right? So he Reno is probably better than heal bot here. Gonna be rich. And now he needs Nova Doomsayer, but then even then I can just kill him with Jaraxxus. Blizzard. Doomsayer, scientist. So now we can actually tap to look for a Dark Bomb and then coin Jaraxxus. Okay. You face Jaraxxus, and an all lord of the Burning Legion! <coughs> <laughs> Alright, so uh, those were uh, two gameplay analysis games against uh, against Freeze Mage. Pretty good matchup. Uh, you know, you do you do have to play your cards a little bit, um, you know, differently than you would against like a mid range deck. But uh, hopefully, the fact that we you know looked at all our plays helped us a little bit instead of just uh, you know making making easy mistakes because it is easy to make mistakes against those kind of decks like filling up your board against a Frost Nova to not have room for a heal bot stuff like that. So thanks for much, so much for watching, guys. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Definitely check out some more articles on TempoStorm.com. And, uh, you know, if, if you're interested in some of my work, check out my stream at twitch.tv slash thecomstraychess or email me for private coaching at thecomstraychess at gmail.com. Um, again, if you want to look for a good reno lock list, TempoStorm.com. The meta snapshot has a lot of great deck lists, not just for this, but a lot of decks. Um, and thank you so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you next week.